Welcome to Draw This. In this episode, we're going to draw a light bulb. So let's go ahead and get started. I'll be using Corel Painter 2015 today and a little bit of Photoshop towards the end. I'll start by turning on Mirror Painting Mode. Then I'm going to select the Detail Oils brush, and I'm going to pick a dark gray color, and I'm just going to start sketching out the light bulb shape. You want to do kind of an upside down gourd shape. And if you want to draw a straight line, you can do it a couple different ways. One of the ways is just to hold shift and that'll let you draw straight lines. You can also use the keyboard shortcuts of B and V to switch between freeform drawing and straight line drawing. So I'm going to switch to straight line drawing mode by hitting V. I'm also going to turn mirror painting mode off. I'll create a diagonal line by tapping to create one side and then tapping again to create the other. And let's go to the threads layer and let's create some threads using the scratch board tool. You'll want to size your brush to be about the diameter of the thread that you want. We're still using straight line drawing here. And I'm just going to elongate it a little bit more so that it sticks out past the edge of the insulation. I'm going to switch back to freeform drawing mode and I'm going to use the bulge tool just to push in towards these sharp corners to round them off and soften them. And then I'll also use the pinch brush to go ahead and paint right along this edge to smooth it out. So I'm painting back and forth, trying to sculpt it into a nice, round, smooth shape. Next, I'll select the Move tool, and if I hold Alt while dragging, I can create a clone of that thread layer. I'm going to create three of those. You want to make sure they're all pretty lined up, and then go ahead and just hold Shift to select that whole group of threads, and then move them together so that they're centered. And then group those thread layers together with Control g Let's go ahead and move over to the insulation layer and let's fill that in using the scratch board. I'm going to turn on mirror painting mode and I'm going to hold shift to draw straight lines. I'm using a red color for this and a blue color for the threading just because these colors stand out and it makes it easier to see. Later we'll change the colors to something more appropriate. You can dim the opacity of the sketch if it's making it hard to see what you're doing. To draw these diagonal lines I'm going to switch to straight line drawing mode with V. If there aren't any gaps in your line, you can select the paint bucket with K and you can just fill in the center really quickly. Let's go ahead and do some work on the bulb layer. Let's select the scratch board tool and let's draw that in. We can fill the bulb with the paint bucket as well and then we'll smooth out any jagged edges using the pinch brush. A bigger brush works better to get smoother lines. Starting out with kind of a medium sized brush and then I'll make my brush a little bit larger to try to smooth out some of those curves a little better. And we'll just hide the sketch layer so that we can see what we're doing better. And we'll continue smoothing out this bulb. Let's go ahead and dim the opacity of the bulb layer because we're going to have it be kind of semi-transparent. And then we'll begin drawing in the glass mount, which is the glass part of the inside of the bulb which holds up the filament. We'll go ahead and draw in the filament as well on its own layer. I'm using the scratch board tool for this. I'm going to return to the glass mount layer and I'm going to draw in some support wires. I'm going to select both the glass mount and the filament layers, and then I'm going to transform them together using Free Transform, which is found in the Edit menu. There's also a shortcut for it in the Shortcuts palette up top. We'll click on the check to commit our transformation. I'm going to turn Mirror Painting Mode on, and then I'm going to use the Pinch Brush to smooth out anything that's too uneven on the glass mount. Be careful not to use too big of a brush or you might mess things up. Let's return to the insulation layer and we'll choose select layer content from the shortcut menu. That'll put a selection around the insulation layer and if we move to the contact layer, we can paint on it with the scratch board tool and we can keep our contact within that insulation shape. Let's create a new layer for insulation lines. These will be some little lines that are on our insulation here. And then we'll go ahead and just draw those in holding shift. We still have that selection active so everything will stay within that selection. I'll switch to straight line drawing mode and I'll draw a diagonal line. Same line that we had on our sketch, going with the same angle that the threads are going. I'm going to switch back to the bulb layer and I'm going to select kind of a light yellow color for now, turn on preserve transparency and hit the fill shortcut. That'll fill it with a more appropriate light bulb color. And I'm going to do the same thing for all the other layers. I'm going to fill those with kind of a silver gray color. I'm going to save a copy of my artwork and then I'm going to go to the bulb layer and turn off preserve transparency. Then I'm going to add a mask to the bulb layer and I'm going to select the airbrush and use freeform drawing mode along with mirror painting mode to paint with black. And anywhere I paint with black in this mask, it's either going to conceal the pixels or make them semi-transparent. So we want to kind of have this nice faded glass edge here. 
If you overpaint too much, you can always select white and paint with white in the mask to bring those pixels back. Next, I'm going to shade the glass mount using the scratch board tool with preserve transparency on. I'm just going to start by adding a darker gray color and then I'll add a lighter gray color over that to try to make this look like reflective glass. I'll go ahead and shade the filament the same way using a lighter gray and a darker gray just to give it a little bit of texture. And I'll return to the mount layer and I will shade those support wires as well using a dark gray color. I'm going to turn mirror painting mode off so that I can do some asymmetrical shading on the glass mount so that the shading isn't the same on both sides. I'm going to return to the thread layer and I'm going to use the airbrush to do a little bit of shading. These are basically long cylinders that are kind of wrapped around another shorter cylinder. So we're going to give them a shadow side, which will be underneath, and we're going to give them a highlight side, which will be right on top. And then we'll go ahead and just merge those thread layers together by merging the group with Control E. That'll make it easier to shade the rest of these. I'm going to add a sharp white highlight. This will establish that our main light source is coming from the right. Let's go to the insulation layer and let's do a little bit of shading on that. As I mentioned before, that's a cylinder as well, so we'll want to shade it appropriately. We'll want to keep the light on the right side. Let's add more shading to the threads. Let's move over to the insulation lines layer and let's add some shading to those as well. And then let's jump back over to the threads because we'll have to shade those as a group. So all together they should have a little bit of shading on the far side and then be brighter where the highlight side is because they're wrapping around the cylinder. I might go ahead and bring back a little bit of the mid-tone there so I don't lose too much of the detail. Then let's start doing some blending. We'll start with the insulation layer and we'll select the coarse oily blender. And we'll just blend that following the direction that we want the metal to appear to curve. So I'm following that diagonal angle between the threads. Let's do some blending on the threads layer as well. You want to follow that same angle that they're going. Use a small brush so that you don't paint too far off of the edge. Next, we'll use Diffuse Blur just to soften some of that blending in a few areas, but don't soften it too much. Next, I'll select the Detail Oils brush and I'll draw a little light line to separate the contact from the insulation, just to make it kind of stand out and look embedded in there. Next, I'll return to the Bulb layer and I'll choose Select Layer Content. I'll create a new layer and I'll call that Corrosion. And then I'll use the Square Chalk brush to paint in some dark blue and some kind of orange rust colors along the base of the bulb where it meets the insulator. And then to clear that selection, I'll choose Select None. I'm going to go ahead and blend up the edge of that corrosion using the Coarse Oily Blender just to kind of re-sculpt it and reshape it. And anywhere where I overpaint it, I can kind of push it back down so it's not so strong. And then rather than this yellow color, I'm going to fill the bulb with gray, making sure that Preserve Transparency is on. I'm going to select the airbrush and black and turn on mirror painting mode. And I'm going to paint along the edge of this bulb so that the edge is quite a bit darker in value and then it fades out and gets lighter and lighter or more transparent towards the center of the bulb. You may need to adjust the opacity of that bulb layer to make it either lighter or darker depending on how strong you want that edge to be. I'm going to go back and forth sometimes and make it lighter and sometimes I'll make it darker. I'll jump back and forth between the mask and painting within the layer itself. Next I'll turn mirror painting mode off so that I can do some asymmetrical masking and shading to the other side of this bulb. Next I'll create a new layer for reflections. I'm going to go ahead and draw those in with the detail oils brush. I'll have to make sure to turn preserve transparency off and then draw those on the inner edge of the bulb. I'm going to select the airbrush and use a smaller brush to go ahead and just paint right along those reflections just to make them look like they're glowing a little bit. I'm going to move over to the corrosion layer and I'm going to turn on preserve transparency and I'm going to paint over any little white fringe that might be on the edges there from having blended it. And I might add in a little bit of that rust color back in. We don't need the sketch anymore so let's just delete that layer. And then let's go ahead and merge the contact through insulation layers with Control E. And we'll just call that threads plus contact. Let's go ahead and use Save As to save a copy of our artwork. And let's turn off Preserve Transparency and let's choose Select Layer Content for that Threads layer. Let's create a new layer called Tinting. Let's use Show Hide Selection to hide the visibility of that selection. Then we'll select the sponge and a rust color. We'll want to set the composite method to multiply and then we'll add a little bit of rusty texture to the insulator. Let's add a mask to that tinting layer and we'll go ahead and use the chalk brush along with black to go ahead and conceal some of that rust color. 
then we'll go ahead and exit the mask by clicking to the left onto the layer icon and let's use a lighter yellow color to vary that tint a little bit in a few spots. We can also add a little bit of blue tint or just about any color you want because since this is metal it's going to be reflecting the environment around it. So we'll go ahead and add in some other colors like a little bit of lime, maybe a little bit of violet color. You don't want to add too much, just a little flavor here and there. We can reduce the opacity of that tinting layer to make a more subtle blend. Then we'll create a new layer for metal texture. We'll use the sponge along with a dark and light gray color just to go ahead and make this look like kind of old weathered metal. And then to make a more attractive blend, we can dim the opacity and set the composite method to overlay and just play with the opacity till you find something you like. Let's go ahead and return to that threads contact layer and let's blend those threads into the insulation using the diffuse blur brush. That'll help kind of fuse and soften those edges together so it looks like one single piece of metal. Then let's go ahead and merge the metal texture, the tinting, and the threads contact layers together by selecting them with shift and then hitting control E. Let's zoom in a bit and start tightening up some details like the bottom corners of the contact. We'll use a tiny little pinch brush just to kind of pinch that together and clean up that rough edge. We'll do a little work on reshaping the insulator because it's not completely flat like that. I'm using a reference photo of a light bulb that I found by doing a search on Google. So I recommend that you do that too so that you can get a better idea of where all these parts are and how they're shaped. I'm gonna go back to the bulb layer, choose select layer content and create a new layer called bulb texture. I'm gonna turn off preserve transparency and just fill that with a sponge. And then I'm going to reduce the opacity of that layer just a little bit. And then if you zoom in, you'll be able to see some of that texture. I'm gonna to return to the glass mount layer and I'm gonna add a little bit of tinting using the sponge. And make sure preserve transparency is on so you don't paint outside of your glass there. And I think those reflections are too bright so I'm gonna dim that reflections layer a little bit. I'm gonna to go to the corrosion layer and I'm gonna draw in a few more details using the detail oils brush. I'm gonna give it a little bit of a white edge on top of the corrosion and then I'm gonna draw in some background corrosion that would be on the far side of the bulb using gray so that it looks a little bit distant. I'm gonna to return to the glass mount layer and add in some details there with the detail oils brush. Just some fine, tiny little lines here and there so that there's a good balance of broad detail and fine detail. And then I'm gonna to return to the bulb layer and do a little more work by refining the mask and the shading. I'll play with the opacity of that bulb layer just a little bit more to find a blend that I like. Then I'm going to return to the threads contact layer, turn on preserve transparency, Make sure my selection's not active by doing select none. Then I'm going to use the airbrush to add in some details. I'm gonna go back to the glass mount layer. I'm gonna add a mask to it, turn off preserve transparency, select black and use the airbrush just to paint over it. That'll help it look a little more transparent. And if you were to put in a background, you'd be able to see through it a little bit so it would look more like glass. I'm gonna go ahead and right click on each of those masks and choose apply mask and then I'm going to save a copy of my artwork as a PSD so that I can bring it into Photoshop. Once I've opened the file in Photoshop, I'm going to go ahead and just merge the corrosion and the threads layers together with Control E. Then I'm going to choose Edit, Transform, Warp. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to pull down on each of these lines right in the center just to add a little bit of a bend to this so it looks like it's more in perspective. Then I'm going to click on the checkbox up at the top to commit to that change. If you hit Control Z, you can do a before and after to see how much it did. Let's go ahead and move that up using the arrow keys on our keyboard. And then I'm gonna select Free Transform from the Edit menu or hit Control T. And I'm just going to squish this a little bit to make it shorter. Let's merge the bulb and the inner bulb layers. And then let's go ahead and transform the bulb using Free Transform to make it a little bit taller. Let's merge the bulb and the thread layers together then let's go to Blur Gallery, Iris Blur from the Effects menu. Let's drag the outer ring of this oval so that we get a little bit of blur along the edge of the light bulb, but no blur in the center. That'll add kind of a focal effect to it to make it look like it's a photograph of a light bulb and the edges won't be so sharp all around. Let's add an adjustment layer down at the bottom of the layers palette for levels. We'll click the auto button, that'll balance out any light or dark imperfections, and you can always make fine adjustments using these three sliders. Let's add another adjustment layer for solid color. We'll select yellow, and then we'll change the blend mode to multiply, and we'll dim it a little bit. That'll give it a little bit of a yellow wash over the whole thing. 
Let's click within the mask of the adjustment layer, and then we'll select the radial gradient tool along with black. We'll make sure that our gradient's going from black to transparency. And then we'll go ahead and draw a gradient from the center of the light bulb outward to make it look kind of like it's glowing. Then we can adjust the opacity of that adjustment layer a little bit to find a more subtle blend. Let's add another adjustment layer for solid color. We'll select a blue-violet color, and then we'll choose Lighten for the blend mode. That's going to turn all of the dark areas a little bit lighter blue. If we dim the opacity, then we'll get a subtle color wash over the dark areas, which I think looks kind of cool because the blue complements the yellow. Let's save a copy of our composition, and then let's flatten all of our layers using Layers Flatten Image. Save once more as a PSD, and then bring that file back into Painter, and we'll do a little bit more work on the edges of these threads because they were bulging out a little bit too much, and just clean up anywhere else where you need to clean up using the distortion brushes like Distorto and Pinch and Bulge. And then if you over sharpen any of the areas that were blurry from using that blur earlier, just use the blur brush to go ahead and blur those out. And I might even just go along some of the edges to make them a little less sharp. I'm gonna soften a couple of the edges on the glass mount as well, just to make that look a little more organic and glass-like. And I think we have a finished light bulb. If you enjoyed this episode of Draw This, take a quick second to like this video and share it with your friends. And if you're new to my channel, click that subscribe button to get updates when I release new videos. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next Tuesday for another episode of Draw This.